Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and I'm here today with the fourth installment of my new podcast, Weekly Poker Hand, where I go over one of my hands, or one of your hands, and I critique the play in it. This is apparently pretty deep in a tournament. We're playing 500 to 1,000 with 125 ante, it looks like. And I open under the gun with Jack-10 suited to 2,200. Notice my bet sizing. I talked about a little bit of, about this in one of the previous episodes, about how I like raising small preflop. And notice right here, I make it 2.2 big blinds. And what this does is it just gives me incredibly good odds preflop. I'm risking, notice, 2,200 to win 2,600 chips. So I, if I only pick this up, say, like 45% of the time and then just lose a check fold every single flop post-flop, I'll still break even. So, of course, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be attacking pots and winning them. So this is just an extraordinarily profitable play to make over and over again throughout a tournament. The guy in third position calls me and we take the flop heads up. It comes Jack 5-2 with two heart, or with one heart, sorry, Jack 5-2 with one heart. I have Jack 10 of hearts. And I make a standard continuation bet of about 3,000 chips. And I like this bet size a lot. I think this is pretty standard and I can't really think of any other way I would play this flop. Um, checking doesn't really serve much of a purpose because if I check in my opponent bets and I check raise, I'm just going to end up getting it in bad a lot of the time. And check calling allows a lot of bad turns to come off. So I like the bet of 3,000 chips. We turn a 10. So now we have effectively the nuts. We have top two pair. And I like to check. And this is a spot in the hand where I really have to decide if my opponent has something. And if I think he doesn't have anything, will he bet? A lot of opponents will float the flop a very high frequency, a high percentage of the time. Floating the flop is when you call the flop on the call on the flop with the intention of bluffing later on the turn. So right here, I uh, I decide to check and let my opponent bet if he does have the float. If if I decide to bet and he's floating, he'll just fold every time. So by checking, I'm going to get full value out of those bluff ha hands. If I bet the turn. And uh, I'm only really going to get value out of a jack. And if he has a jack, he's going to put all the money in anyways. So this is, again, one of these spots where I have a very strong hand, but my opponent's range is generally tilted to where they either have nothing and can only bluff off, or they have something like top pair, in which case I'm going to get all the money anyways. So I like to check, and my opponent bets 8,800 into the 13,000 chip pot. And now I have to figure out if I should shove or call. I think shoving in this spot actually looks relatively bluffy. It looks like ace-king or ace-queen that's just trying to steal the pot at this point, I think. So for that reason alone, I really like a check shove. You always want your made hands to look like draws and your draws to look like made hands. What that's going to do is it is going to make your opponent make incorrect decisions over and over again. And a lot of players think that check calls are usually sort of like to trap. And they think check shoves are a play made with draws. So if I'm making a play with a draw, my opponent will call anytime he has any sort of decent made hand. So right here, I elect to go for the check shove. And my opponent calls it off with king jack. And I think this is a pretty well played hand by my part. And I think that I sort of tricked my opponent into thinking that I didn't have anything. Um, because really, when I check shove here, my range is what's called very polarized. I either have a draw, which is basically nothing, or I have a monster. And I really don't know if I'm doing this with a draw. So if I can get my opponent to get it all in thinking I have a draw when my range is only the nuts, I have certainly succeeded in the hand, and that is exactly what happened here. So we get it all in against uh, King Jack, and we hold up. And... Next week's, er, and, and if you want to go see what I think of my opponent's play, you can go to weeklypokerhand.com and download the second part of this podcast where I critique my opponent's play. And there are certainly a few things that I can say about it. I'll, I, have to hold, I have to hold my tongue until the next part of this video. But uh, yeah, go to weeklypokerhand.com and check out part two of this podcast. And also, while you're at it, pick up my new book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, Volume 1. You can get it on Amazon. It is an extraordinarily good book that 
basically everyone has given me an excellent review on. So check it out, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. And if you guys would like me to review one of your hands, email it in to secrets at prof or, I'm sorry, email it into support at jonathanlittlesecrets.com and I just might review it in one of these podcasts. This has been Jonathan Little. I hope you've enjoyed it.